Hey, Epic Fam. Here we are. It stinks. Thursday. Wish I could be getting together with all of you. Um, sad we can't. We want to continue to fight, though, to stay connected. Um, all of you, I'm sure, are spending a lot of time on your phone. I've spent more time on my phone this last week than I have in a long time. Uh, but stay connected with your friends, with your leaders. I had a really fun FaceTime with my small group yesterday. Um, continue to fight for connection and continue to fill your mind with truth and for good things. It's easy for our minds to wander right now. And I think it's been really important for me to remember balance in this time, right? We don't want to live in fear. We don't want to give in to, you know, hoarding and being really selfish in this time, being afraid of our own well for our own well-being. But we also don't want to just brush this off, say, oh, this is all... There's too much hype and all this, right? There's got to be some kind of balance. And it was reminding me of this passage in John where Jesus is described as being both fully grace and fully truth, right? This is from John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have, re have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. For no one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Okay, and so I think we got to have this balance of grace and truth, right? We don't want to overreact. We don't want to, but we also don't want to just brush this off because we have a responsibility to our community, right? To love our community well, to do our best to follow these guidelines that the CDC is putting out and um, Orange County Health. And so even though it's really confusing, I think we have to do our due diligence to love our neighbor by doing our best to follow these guidelines. And hopefully if we come together and rally as a community, we can um, power through this whole situation. As far as Epic tonight, um, Ethan Emerson's going to be preaching out of Mark, and we're, we've got his video uploaded on the Seaside website, so you can go to seasidehb.org. The link is in my bio there, um, and you can check out, we've got uh, content for all ages, so parents, if you're looking for something for different age groups, We've got stuff all the way from nursery, age kids through high school. So um, check us out on our website. You just click on the tab Curriculum for Church at Home, and we've got lots of resources there for you. And we're going to continue to try to stay connected uh, virtually, even though that's not our favorite thing in the world. We're doing our best to continue to stay connected with you all. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out. My email is scott at seasidehb.org, or if you want to just message me here on Instagram, I'll be checking this. Love you guys. Hang in there. Peace. Hello, Seaside and Epic Nights. Um, I may, uh, Scott may have already introduced me, but once again, my name is Ethan. Uh, I go to Edison, and I'm excited to bring the word again tonight, even though it's different, even though we're in a rough time right now with this whole pandemic stuff, I'm still super excited to bring what God has to share through these hard times. And I do believe that he is working through everybody and through our nation and our world as we go through this global pandemic. I just want to say that I hope every one of you are safe and healthy and having fun in quarantine because I have been playing Minecraft nonstop 24-7. I've only stopped just to record this for y'all. Um... But once again, I hope everybody's doing well. I just want to let you know that um, that God has his hand over the situation. And let's dive into the word. Even though I'm doing this virtually and recording it before, um, it's still going to have the same feeling. And I hope it does. And I hope it will still get the message across. And you'll still feel God's presence there the same as I give it live. The same way. So today, we will be diving in to Mark chapter 11 verse 15 through 18 it's a short passage short passage today but it has a lot of meaning so let's dive right into it 
I'm gonna grab my Bible right here. So feel free to open up your Bibles if you would like to. Um, if not, I'll just be reading it off of mine. Um, it's okay if we have a different version. Mine's like then. Let's see. Let's see exactly what translation it is. Okay, it's a new language translation, so it's a study Bible. So if you have one of those, great. It will be perfect. But if not, try your best to follow along or just listen to me um, saying it itself. So chapter 11, verse 15. Jesus clears the temple. When they arrived back in Jeru Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables, the money changers, and the chairs of those selling doves. And he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. So basically what's going on right here is millions of people are gathering back in Jerusalem. It's the Passover. It's a massive Jewish holiday. So Jesus and his disciples are going to this massive temple in Jerusalem to worship God because it's the Passover, right? And in the temple, there are people, there's people selling stuff such like pigeons, other birds, sacrifices, right? And basically, Jesus didn't like that because the temple is supposed to be a place of worship. Let's keep reading. He said to them, The scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. So I think what basically... What Jesus is saying here is not that, um, well, oh, in those days, um, what these people were specifically trying to do, selling stuff, is when people travel for the Passover, they bring animals, they bring a perfect lamb all the way from where they live, somewhere around the world, to Jerusalem for the Passover, right? And when they get into the temple to sacrifice and pay for their sins, right? There's people selling stuff saying, oh, that's not, that's not perfect plan. Buy this perfect pigeon, buy this perfect animal that we have to sell, right? So you can kill it and sacrifice that. That's basically what people were doing. But of course, since it was the Passover, normally like a pigeon would cost like $2. And they were selling it for like $10,000. But like, of course, people didn't have a chance. They took advantage of like the poor people saying, um, they took advantage of the poor people and basically we're selling them crazy priced pigeons, perfect animals, not just pigeons, but they specifically mentioned pigeons, perfect animals to sacrifice to God. And of course, when Jesus walks in, he didn't like that at all. I mean, because you're taking advantage of God's house. And imagine how disrespectful that could be, especially to, especially on a big holiday where there's thousands of people just coming to worship God and glorify him. And there's people taking advantage of that. So I could see where, we could all see where Jesus' viewpoint is coming through. He walks in and sees people selling stuff. And he's like, what's going on? Like, this is supposed to be a place of worship. Another thing that temples are supposed to be is a place of quietness. It's supposed to be very quiet. Everybody's supposed to be very focused on God. Because, but, but because people were selling stuff, it was loud. And Jesus looked at that and he said, this, this is not how we're supposed to do it. This is not how we're glorifying God. We are not glorifying God, selling stuff, taking advantage of people who have come to worship God just so we can make a penny, just so they can make a penny, right? So there are sellers everywhere um, selling things. So let's see. Let's finish verse 18 real quick. Let's see. When the, when the leading priests and teachers of religious law heard Jesus would have done, they began planning how to kill him. But they were afraid of him because the people were so amazed at his teaching. So basically they used this. They used what Jesus did they, when he saw what the priests were doing was wrong. And then they be, or the priests saw what he was doing to be wrong. And so that they're using to start killing starting to begin a plot to kill him so but another thing i want to point out is in verse 17 if you have your bibles great but i'm just going to point this out real quick it says the sculptures declare my temple so jesus refers to the temple as his temple right which is crazy because every time i read this this stuck out to me the 
first time I went over it with Grant, it said my temple. And I was like, so Jesus is referring to the temple as my. Isn't that so cool? My temple, my place of worship where you can glorify God. My temple, right? But yet people were still so amazed at his teachings. Yeah, people were probably mad that he threw over a bunch of tables and stuff. But that doesn't mean, or, but people were still super amazed at what, it, what he had to bring and what he had to teach. So, it's crazy how Jesus continued to defy the way society was at the time, right? Flipping over tables. Walks into a room, flips over tables. Ruins all the money, releases all the animals when they fell over, right? But yet, like, he's still glorifying God in the process. But I think it's important that that we continue to set our minds. I think one of the main messages here that is pointing out is that we continue to set our minds on what really matters when it comes to worship too and glorifying God, right? I think this can be a reminder for all of us, especially me. Um... That when you come to worship God, it's not to hang out with your friends at a church or something like that. It's to, you know, worship Him, right? And I think that's the message inside that story is so beautiful and such, like, a great reminder that, like, you know, like, we can't just use God. We have to give back to Him, right? Like, we can't just use God to ask for a test, right? Uh, hey, God, can you give me a good grade on a test, right? We can't just use Him to do that. And we can't just use God to, you know, ask him to do this and this and this and that without giving anything in return, right? So I think that it's awesome that Jesus was just, Jesus did this without even thinking. He flipped over thousands of tables. He's like, you need to draw my attention back to me and my temple. My temple is meant for worship and you are supposed to worship there. And flips over tables. Flips over the people that continue to defy God and defy what he's saying. And I think it's just so beautiful how he did that. I know, sorry, I'm rambling on about this. But I'm just so in awe about what Jesus did here and how I can implement this in my life. Flipping over tables in my life that, you know, are at a wrong turn, right? They're, they're, yet, in theory, they're supposed to be glorifying God, but they're not. Let's see, so one example that I could flip over my table, that Jesus can flip, or Jesus has flipped over my table, is, you know, my act of worship in the past. You know, I used to, like, feel like when I worshipped, I didn't go all out. Like, I just would sing, right, and i just look at the words. But then I realized that, like, w songs are just so powerful, whether it's glorifying God. And I took that, and I realized, like, you know, I started to truly understand what worship meant. And this was a couple of years ago. I started to truly, Jesus flipped over my table. I would just go and, you know, sing, cool, it sounds sick and all. But I really started to understand what worship meant and how it glorifies God. Whether that's playing worship, <laughs> music stuff in the back, whether that's playing worship or singing it itself. Um, I started to truly understand what it meant. And... Just singing and glorifying God is one of my favorite ways to honor Him. Because I feel like songs are so powerful. So there's an example real quick of how Jesus flipped over my table. And continued to... Uh, and continued to do that today. It opens up my mind to new things. But here's what a coincidence this is, right? We're going through a global pandemic right now. My prayer is that Jesus completely flips over the table of all the fear and anxiety over the thousands of people across the world and turns into joy and happiness. Because at the end, Jesus is in control. He is in control of this pandemic. He's, he, is, he is in control of what is going on in our world right now. But I just can't, we'll just continue to pray that he will flip over those tables. He'll flip over those, those tables He'll flip over what the world is thinking, the fear and anxiety in this world. 
whether that's in us, ourselves, our anxiety, our fear of what's going on in our communities right now, but also on a global scale, turning that into joy and peace. I had a prayer session last night with my family, and that was something that I felt super strongly about, that Jesus will continue to flip over those tables, right? Keep revealing new stuff to us as we go through this time, right? And just like he flipped over the tables to change the people's perspective on what the Passover meant and what worship and glorifying God really meant, he will continue to flip our tables over to draw our attention back to him because in end, he is the cure. But he will continue to flip tables in our lives, flip over the tables, change our perspective on stuff. Change our perspective, right? Another example of changing perspective, I've probably told this story a thousand times, but it's so good that I would love to tell it again. Um, if you've heard it, um, get to hear it again. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, it was when I was in Indonesia, and I arrived at this place called uh, Desert Point, which is a killer surf break. But you live in paper huts on the floor, and it's not fun. I remember my first night I arrived there, I was so used to, like, the five-star hotels and, you know, AC. And I get there, and I have to sleep on the floor, go to the restroom in a, in a hole in the ground. It was, it was terrible for me. But yet, like, we still had to carry out what God wanted us to do in that time, giving out donations, and what made it worse is we are in the middle of a Muslim community. So, like, if we talked about God, we'd get in trouble, right? But, yeah, we continued to pray. I remember one night we did an all-night prayer. That was awesome. That changed my perspective on the whole trip. It turned to be my least favorite part of the trip for the two days I was there, and I was there for seven days. It turned out to be my least favorite part of the trip to my favorite part of the trip because I never wanted to leave because I loved it so much. The simplicity of life, how... My attention went back from technology, from surfing, from all the other things that Indonesia brought for me to turning it back to God. And because ultimately, like, he was the reason that I was there. He was the reason why I was in Indonesia. He was the reason why people went in the Passover. So he flipped over my table and flipped over the perspective. Uh, I just want to say, continue to pray. Continue to pray and cast your fears onto God. If you're struggling with these times, it's okay. I just wanted to say uh, I'll be happy to pray. Uh, although these times are scary for some people, I just know and have a feeling that God will change it for better. Make something great out of this situation. You know, the Lord works in mysterious ways and everything happens for a reason. I just want to say, I pray and hope that everybody that is watching, whether you're at home with a group of friends, um, just know that God is still here in these rough times, and he'll reveal that to you somehow, flipping over a table, changing your perspective. You know, it's, it's cool to see, and just continue to pray, and to use this time, the simplicity the flip over the table of what society is bringing to draw our attention back to God and what he has to bring to us. What he has to bring to us. Draw our attention back and see what he has to bring back to us. That's something that was on the topic of my family's prayer night last night. Bringing our attention back to God with this. Just like how Jesus brought everybody, the millions of people in the temples perspective back to why they were there because jesus himself let's pray jesus lord i thank you for all the people watching this right now um and even the people that aren't god that they'll just still know that you're there and still know that you are in control through the situation that you will flip tables over i thank you for flipping those tables over for showing people how to glorify you and god bro jesus Thank you for everything that you've done.
Thank you for your love and your kindness, God. And continue to work through our lives and to flip tables over when we don't expect it. Change our perspective on something that opens us up to something way more extravagant. Something that, just like me, just like you flipping a table up for me and my idea of worship and what it meant, or just my mission, my love for missions in Indonesia, God. I thank you and we praise you. And continue to watch over all the families around the world in the midst of this global pandemic. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for having me. I just want to say God bless and uh, hope your break is going well. Peace.